First question is from Wajess88. If you have a hard time activating and focusing on your non-dominant side, should you be doing extra reps on that side? Uh, not extra reps, but rather focus more on control, slow your reps down, and focus on stability, and use the weak side as the guide for the strong side. So in other words... That's the side that dictates the reps and the weight that you use. What they're at, I'm confusing the question. They're asking, should they do the side that's weaker? Yeah, yeah more reps. Like to trying get to bring it up, up with reps. Oh. Uh, but, you know, the, by the way, and get it activated. Oftentimes, the the weaker side. Sometimes it actually has less muscle, but oftentimes, muscle mass wise, they're almost the same. Mm -hmm. It's weaker because you're less connected to it. That's right. right. So focus on the connection to it, and then and and you can totally do this. You know, there's a famous story of uh, God. Who was this? Damn, who's the boxer? It was an, there was another boxer who he broke his right hand and had to practice with his left, and ended up becoming a great left-handed boxer as a result because he always practiced with his left. Mm -hmm. So you can take your non-dominant side and bring it up quite a bit. You just have to slow down you know and focus what? on the connection. I'm glad you picked this question, and that's good for us to kind of go on this tangent a little bit with this because we have discussed this multiple times, and I think it was me originally who talked about like how I would solve this with clients, but something that we didn't address that you just brought up that I think is really important is – the side that is is less dominant that feels technically weaker it's a lot of times it isn't that it's just yeah, you, yeah poor poor connection or you have limited range of motion that and it's it's not necessarily a muscle thing and part it could be of a postural thing and too one of the things you got to be careful with and we've said this right you use the the non dominant side to dictate how many you do on the other side but here's the thing when i'm doing that right or when i especially when i was doing this early on in my career when i had discrepancy to left and right on bicep curls is my right side that is less dominant um, i could still get let's say you know 10 but the last two were like sloppy looking so it wouldn't it's not going to help you very much to do eight really beautiful form and Good then form. two sloppy ones yep. and then come over and get match 10 yep. yeah. because you're what you you're still playing into that so you, the, it's so good that you brought that up because we haven't discussed the importance of that that you need to stop it the moment right. the form breaks down that is that's the end you, of the rep. you have to be a lot more intentional with that yeah so it's not just about reps or just about like catching it up it's it's really about connecting to it and how to do that by setting up your body in good position and having good mechanics all the way through and so just you know slowly going through that squeezing a bit more like you know taking your time with it maybe going slower with your reps too uh and and then you know whatever that side does dictates the other side and then also uh you know this also highlights you should go in and whatever the 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 closest joint is and address potential mobility issues there so you know, and see if you if there is a clear discrepancy between left and right. I mean, I just shared that post from uh, Andrew Spina, right? Is it Andros? Andros? Or Andrew? I always say Andrew. Yeah, Andrew. We know who you're talking Andrio about. Andrew Spina, right? Um, and I absolutely love his content. He made it, he did this post that said, you know, if you have, uh, you know, 60% capacity in your left hip and 40% capacity in, in your right hip, uh, no amount of glute exercises is ever going to balance that out like you have to address the uh, your ability to control each joint equally so in, in order to balance the, the the muscle out and keep yourself from shifting left or right in a squat the same thing is true when we're talking about what we're talking about right now where there's a discrepancy left or right, right. if you have a one forward shoulder it, you know it's gonna it's gonna affect the other shoulder as well it or is. your yeah your chest yeah and there's this this fear i think sometimes when people do this kind of unilateral training that they're going to lose their max performance in their barbell exercises. I learned this firsthand recently. I had stopped squatting for months because I had an issue with my SI joint on one side and my back was kind of starting to hurt. And so I said, okay, I'm going to do four months of lunges and single leg exercises, essentially unilateral type stuff or split stand stuff, and then see what happens. And I did balance myself out quite a bit, went back to squats and came out stronger. You know what's funny about that? Who cares though? Anyways, it's so funny. Unless, I unless you're, I don't know, but <laughs> you know, lift more. Who cares? <laughs> care. Like why? That to me, it's like so funny that unless you are a power lifter, 
Uh, yeah, you're right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you're right. You're, who cares? Who cares if my barbell squat did drop 200 pounds? It doesn't fucking matter. If you if you fixed an imbalance and you got strong doing Bulgarian split squats, that's a huge win. Even if you yeah. lost 10 percent of your barbell back squat, this I and I, I really blame. This is a, one of the things I don't I don't like. It's been a while since I've, we've harped on CrossFit. The when I remember when CrossFit got introduced to our space. Before, you know, I didn't know what a PR was. So I was, a, I was a trainer for at least five, six years. Never heard the term PR in my life. Didn't yeah. know what that was. Didn't Not know yet. what, didn't know what I that. I thought it was public relations. That's, so what, I, I, that's what I thought. Like, that's what I thought. Who's your PR agent? Yes. I don't know. I did not, I've never heard. Did you guys remember hearing that before? I never no. heard that. Not the term PR, yeah, Max. No, it was I, Max. I, I, yeah. yeah, it was like, yeah. What's your and even then, a lot of people didn't talk about maxing out that often. No, it wasn't no. a common thing that you heard in the it was gym. just us bros. But it became yeah. very popular to be hitting PRs and talking about that all the time that now every Everybody looks at that as their measure of success of like, oh, I, you know, I moved my bench press or my barbell squat up. Well, if you if you moved your barbell squat up by 20 pounds, but you still have fucking shit mobility mm -hmm. or your ankles yeah. bothering you yeah, here or your hip, who cares? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And especially if you're the average person who just wants to look good, feel good, build a little muscle, lean out. You can do all of those things and lose your barbell back squat strength. And still, uh, and still kick ass at all those things. So it's well, like, who cares? Yeah, the market for knee sleeves and elbow sleeves and all that—they care. Yeah, and Ben Gay. Yeah.